Hey friends, welcome to RV Curious. I'm Higgy Sue and I've spent hundreds of hours researching and boiling down what I've learned so that you can spend less time learning and more time exploring. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I installed the Precision Circuits Lithium BIM 225 in my Thor 4 Winds 25V. In a previous video, you might have learned why you need a battery isolation manager and why your existing BIM might not be good enough. But in this video, we're going to focus on learning how I installed my new BIM and solving the mystery of the extra wire. Just to stop and take a quick second, I am not an electrical expert. I'm not even a BIM expert. I'm just somebody who spent a lot of time learning and wanted to share it with others. Please consult an expert as needed if you feel uncomfortable with any part of this install. The tools and supplies that I use during the rest of this video are listed here and I'll place them in the notes below. What I didn't originally list, but I added afterwards was the step stool. Frankly, I'm not a very short person, but I needed a step stool to get myself into the engine. Before you start any work on any electrical in your RV, please make sure that you disconnect all of the power. For me, that meant disconnecting the shore power, disconnecting the battery at the cutoff switch, taking off the negative terminal on my battery bank, and taking off the negative terminal on the car chassis. Next thing that I needed to do was give myself some room to work, and so I used a pump to pull out all the antifreeze, decouple it from the chassis, and then pull it back so that I had lots of room to get at the thing that I needed, which is in that picture on the right-hand side. Before you start ripping anything out, please make sure that you document everything. I used a camera to scope out the part numbers of the existing modules a week ahead of time so that I could do my research. And at this point, I took many additional photos, put labels on each cable using tape, and made a drawing before I began. It's super important when you get to key moments like this to have a clear plan and make a very deliberate choice to continue on or not. I had read a lot about this and I was really comfortable that I was gonna be removing the right pieces, but in all of my research, I hadn't come across the mystery yellow wire. Luckily for you, I decided to continue on, so it was time to start taking everything out. I found it easier to just detach the units from the metal wall first, and then I could pull it closer to me in order to detach all of the wires. Up until this point, I could have just put everything back But then came the real moment of no return. I cut the blue ignition wire away from the isolator relay, and then I crimped on a new ring connector to the end. If you aren't familiar with working with electrical wires, this step might seem a little scary, but it's really quite easy, I promise. With the space cleared out under the hood, it was time for me to attach my new BIM. This project required special metal tapping screws, which are easy to come by. I brought the BIM to the hardware store to find the right size screws to fit the holes. And since I only needed three, I didn't want to buy a whole box online that I would never use. I used the BIM and a marker to draw dots on the frame where I wanted the holes. And at this point, it was important to select a drill bit that was just the right size for the screw. You know when you have the right size, when the drill bit post lines up perfectly with the post at the center of the screw and doesn't cover any of the threads. If you aren't quite sure which one to choose, choose a smaller one. You can always make the holes bigger if you need to. Personally, I had never drilled into metal before, so this is the part of the project that actually made me the most nervous. And because of that, I drilled first with a much smaller drill bit to make pilot holes, and then drilled with the one that I had picked out. For those of you wondering why I'm not using video footage most of the time, my project looked a lot like this. All you would have gotten was a view of my arms in the way. So you're welcome. Once I had my holes, I screwed in the new BIM and attached all of the wires according to my plan. I love this new BIM from Precision Circuits. It's pretty much self-documenting with each post clearly labeled directly on the unit itself. There's no guessing. Starting at the top left, we have a place for the blue ignition wire so that the BIM knows that the truck is starting. The top middle is the ground wire. We don't cover DC power here, but for now it's enough to know that everything you do with power needs to find ground. In the case of the RV, we treat the metal of the truck itself as ground. So as you can see in the photo on the left, it just gets attached to the truck just above the BIM. In the top right is the post that is used for the emergency start switch that's inside near the steering wheel. And in my RV, 
These two wires, red and red yellow, were bound together, so I placed this here on the signal post. The bottom posts are for positive connections to the truck and coach batteries. I still wasn't quite sure what the yellow wire was, but I decided to put it back on the same post as the coach battery, which is where it was installed in the old setup. With all of that done, it was time to put everything back together, refilling and attaching the antifreeze container, reattaching the truck battery negative lead, reattaching the house battery negative lead, and then turning on the battery switch. The lights turned on and the truck started up right away, which is uh, something to be pretty excited about because up until this point, I wasn't quite sure. So I grabbed my husband who agreed to drive so that we could monitor the batteries. The BIM did exactly what I wanted it to do. We were out for about 30 minutes and for the first 15 minutes, we could see positive current being sent to our batteries. Then the BIM disconnected around the 15 minute mark to give the alternator a rest. You can see that in the second picture where you see the negative number for current, which is a small amount of power being consumed by the house as we drive down the road. Then about 15 minutes later, the third picture, we can see the positive current start up again and drop lower as it recognizes that the batteries are now nearly full. My plan is to keep an eye on this during our next few road trips, but overall, I'm pretty happy. At this point, I was feeling really proud of myself and I wanted to celebrate. But unfortunately, when we got home, we noticed a problem. In a second, I'll share with you what went wrong and how I fixed it. But please take a moment now to help me make more educational videos like this by liking, subscribing, or best of all, sharing this video. Here's what happened. We were unable to open the slide. Thor has a safety feature which requires that the ignition is on for the slides to operate. And the reason they do this is related to the way that the lead acid batteries work, but we'll save that lesson for another day. After a bit of fiddling, we realized that we could operate the slides if we held down the emergency start button near the steering wheel and the slide switch at the same time. But since my husband isn't gonna be and I'm not Elastigirl, that meant that neither of us could operate the slide alone, which meant no traveling alone. Also, it was just wrong and it was enough to keep me curious. I was still super curious about that mystery wire, and now I thought that it might have something to do with the functioning of the slide. So my first course of action was to try moving the wire to each of the different posts on the BIM. And unfortunately, it was a lot of work, but no luck. I then tried contacting the various support teams for the different components involved, and they were all super responsive, but unfortunately no one could help. And I even posted in a Thor user forum with no luck. So the next morning, I just got to it and tried to figure it out. I started by tracing wires and testing a couple of fuses along the way and ended up under the steering wheel. Unfortunately, it took me that long before it dawned on me that I should have just started behind the emergency switch to begin with. There I found my wires, but they weren't connected in the way that I thought they were. Here the yellow and red yellow went to the switch and the red wire went off somewhere else. I guess that it went off to the controller for the slides. But if you remember back, the red and the red yellow wires were the ones bound together on the original setup. Those are the ones that I thought I would find at the emergency switch. After noodling for a bit, here's what I was thinking. You need two wires to create a loop between the BIM and the emergency switch. Here it's shown with yellow and red yellow. When you press the emergency switch, it makes the connection and you can actually hear the BIM make a noise and vibrate. For safety reasons, Thor also requires that the slide out controller connects with the ignition and by putting those on the same post, we could send that signal and everything would start to work. With that in mind, I had a new plan. I moved the red wire from the SIG post over to the ignition post so that it would get a direct signal when the ignition was on. Everything else stayed the same. Time to celebrate, it all worked. Here are the two diagrams side by side. In my old setup, the red wire was getting a signal as soon as the ignition was on. And in the new one, I needed to pair the red wire directly with the ignition wire in order to make that signal happen. Mystery solved. Remember, luck favors the prepared. So you shouldn't be surprised that the real work is done before you even start. See you next time. Until then, remember to stay curious.